name? Brianna. How long have you been coming here for? Five years. Wow. Well, it teaches us to use our skills. Um, sometimes we close our eyes to like, feel like in a whole different point of view, like what we have to do. Um, yeah, and it's very fun. And uh, what was your favorite thing you did today? One thing that um, you liked doing today? I think it was probably at the weapons class doing the men screaming. Yeah, you're hitting. pretty loud. You got a loud war cry. <laughs> you had me scared. <laughs> you're pretty tough. Yep. My name is Austin Vero, and I'm 13 years old. Almost eight years. I just like helping the younger kids. I like I like seeing like that they're always improving, but at the same time, I also like working in the adult classes, it's probably like my favorite thing to do because like it's, they're always pushing me to do better and like, while like I like to help younger kids, I also like to push myself. I think I see myself doing the same thing. I think I see myself just keep on participating and being ambitious. I can tell you right now that every other dojo, they just, or most other dojos just hand you belts, especially in America, they just will hand you belts, but like you have to, you have to work for it. You get like, I've almost been coming here for eight years and I'm only a green belt. I've been a green belt for like three years. So, so like there's some kids, like you have to just work for what you get. Nothing's handed to you. Like it's, and also everyone can do karate. Like it doesn't matter what your size, what your personality is, everyone can do karate. My name is Paris. I'm 24 years old and I've been part of this dojo for 16 and a half years. I started when I was seven years old. I don't remember life before karate. I've been doing this longer than anything else. What makes this place so different from other schools is that you're actually going to learn something and you're going to become a better person in the process and you're going to be able to help others. It's not just about punching and kicking. You're working on who you are on the inside as well as on the outside. So it's physical, it's mental, it's emotional. Our, the five words that we always say is manners, respect, responsibility, effort, and appreciation. Because without those things, you have nothing. The sensei here is here to show us what we need to do and we need to teach ourselves. He can only show us so much and we have to take that information in and we have to learn something. So I started out as a kid, I remember what it was like having the big kids help me out. So now that. I'm the big kid to them. I try and help them to the best of my abilities so that they can grow and learn like I was able to. So I work with the kids and I also work with adults as well. So how you work with a child is much different than how you work with an adult. So it helps you learn that you have to work with everybody differently, whether it's five-year-old, 12-year-old, 30-year-old. Everybody's different, everybody learns at a different rate, everyone responds differently. So really helps you across the board learn how to work with people, which is really important. Uh, my name is David Chen. I'm 32 years old. I started at the dojo around 2007, so in June it will be 12 years that I've been attending the dojo. I think the thing that makes us so different than all the other schools around here are the diverse nature of our education. Uh, we don't just stick to the physical. Uh, you always hear people say like, Kurate is physical and mental, like it's half and half. But I don't think it can be summed up by just those two things. When my best friend asked me to come here, I started experiencing the work that I had to put in to obtain what I was getting, and I decided this is where I wanted to stay. My favorite thing about my sensei is it's my sensei. My sensei is so passionate about this. This is not just like something to get him money or, you know, something that passes his time. He lives and breathes karate, and you can see that, and he cares about everything. The history, his teacher, his teacher's teacher, and passing that knowledge down. He wants to make sure that this style survives and passes on to, to a new generation. Uh, because the idea is that we try to pass along to the children, especially nowadays with like technology being so prevalent and kids being in front of iPads all the time, it's nice to see them actually interacting with each other. And uh, that's my favorite thing about my sensei is that he's so driven and passionate. My name is Amy, I'm 53 years old. I've been coming here for 13 years. Um, why do I come to this dojo? Uh, I come to this dojo because of my sensei. 
uh, because of the other students and what it offers. My sensei, he's, he's all business, uh, but yet he does have a softer side to him. He's very passionate about what he does and how he passes along his information. Uh, the dojo is an extended family. Things are going on in your life, people understand, they're there for you if you want them, but they, they don't push you to do anything you don't need to do personally. Um, in the dojo though, everybody pushes each other to their limit, which is what I really enjoy about this dojo. There's, there's no hiding in the dojo, there's mirrors all over the place. You can't hide here, so it's all out there. I have to say working with my weapons is my favorite. Um, my bow, Psy, uh, figuring things out with it, realizing my, my shortcomings and some of my achievements with, the, with my weapons. I don't see myself as a leader. I see myself as guiding the, the kids to push themselves as hard as they can, to not be afraid to try something, to always move forward in what they're, in what they're practicing and, and in their life too. I guess the best way I can describe how I help Sensei with the children is to just show them the right way to do it. And when you're working with the kids, you know, when you're working with yourself, by yourself, practicing, you can make your mistakes. That's where you, you work those out. But when you're working with the kids, you have to make sure you're doing whatever technique tech Sensei has asked you to show the kids in the best possible way. Because they're going to copy the good and the bad that you're doing. So you want them to copy as much good as you can. My favorite thing about my sensei? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> waiting for that one. Oh no! <laughs> um, I guess the, the, my, the favorite thing um, that, that I have about my sensei is how he pushes me. Um, there's no excuses with him. Uh, and I don't feel I need to give him any excuses. I give him everything I can uh, when I can and how I can. He's, he definitely brings out the best in me. I come from China, so my Chinese name is Liu Cong. My English name is Cong Liu. <laughs> so I came to this dojo uh, this November, will be my first year. And uh, I had my colleagues who practiced here before, and we worked together. He introduced me to this dojo. And the best part of uh, which I like this dojo, it makes me feel like uh, in a family, in a home, at home. The style's name is Shaolin Ji Liu, so which dates back to the Kaiso, our founder. He has been practiced uh, in Shaolin Temple. And I came from China in the same province where Shaolin Temple is. So I feel I'm connected with these styles. And uh, the best part of all uh, of this dojo, I feel like uh, I can always feel at, at home and the sensei is always pushing me. So I'm from China, so I study here. So the first uh, two or three years when I practice here, uh, sometimes I feel like working in the lab the whole day, I feel exhausted and don't want to come here. But since my sensei is keep pushing me and make me strong, so have no excuse. So that's the best thing I love about uh, practicing here. And uh, compared with other dojos, I haven't been practicing. But to me, this, the best part of this dojo is make me feel at home. So I really feel like uh, connected with, with this dojo, with this style. And the best part of my sensei is he's always pushing me and he's my idol. So I like practicing here. Um, uh, I'm Dan Hayes and the dojo is Island Budokan. And we are a school of Budo and Bujutsu. Uh, the primary school of practice here is Shunjuryu Kenyukai Watanabeha. We also teach Yagyu Shinkaigiru, Kendo, Kenjutsu, Bato Jutsu, Judo, Karate Jutsu, um, among other things. <laughs> so uh, we've been practicing, I've been practicing for 48 years. The school's been in this particular location for 27, but I started with my teachers in 1960, they started in 1964 in the United States here, um, and I started in 1973, uh, and I've been going full time ever since. Uh, my teachers were chosen by the government of, the, of Japan, the emperor, to come and represent the Japanese martial arts world uh, at the World's Fair and the World's Expo in 1967, World's Fair in 1964. So my teachers established 
martial arts training academies at Stony Brook University in 1964, West Point, Kings Point, all the military academies in the area in New York. We're at 384 Mark Tree Road, East of Talkett, in the uh, World Gym Arena. So the belt system that we have here, as an example, is based on your accomplishments and it's just a recognition of your accomplishments. It's not a reward, it's not an award. It is just a recognition of your accomplishments and your obligations and responsibilities. It's not good for you, you got a green belt, it's okay, you got a green belt, so now all these people who are under a green belt are now going to look to you, so you need to make sure that you're on your game all the time and you're responsible for this much information, which should give you incentive to want to get better at it so then you continue to grow. And so it's a recognition of work, it's an acknowledgement of effort, and it's a sign of responsibility. You're driven by the satisfaction that you're doing a really good job and now you have more responsibility so you're a more responsible person, you're, you're a, an effect, more effective human being and, and, and people will be looking to you. You should be happy with that. If I do really well in a particular subject that I'm studying, the enjoyment of getting good at it and becoming more competent should be fulfilling enough without having to have someone else say, hey, you did a really good job. And that's what I'm trying to teach them. So they need to be aware of their incentives. So I will tell them and pat them on the back and say they're doing a great job when they are doing a great job, but I will tell them when they're not. I can teach the children and the adults to learn and to learn how to learn and to enjoy the process of learning instead of memorizing and taking in information and spinning out again. You know, I need them to know how to apply what they learn here, not just taking information. So, like I said, when we're doing Shi'i or fighting with each other, uh, it's communication. They love it because they're not trying to hurt each other, they're trying to challenge each other. They're being challenged and sometimes they succeed and sometimes they, they don't succeed, but the failures are just an opportunity to get better, it's one step closer to getting it right. And because we hammer that in so much, there's really no fear of fighting because we're not getting hurt. We have chest protection on now, you know, groin, cup, and mouthpiece. We try to keep it as real as possible, but more importantly, until we get to that level where we can go full out, I want them to be protected and I want them to enjoy the process of failure. Mata kata wo itadakamashita in Japanese is a, is a concept of mata kata wo itadakamashita means to, uh, be gra to graciously accept failure as a means of getting better. Um, and those, are, those, those concepts are, that concept is huge. Kid comes into the dojo first day, what's your job? Your job is to make mistakes. You're supposed to make as many mistakes as you can so you're closer to getting it right than anybody else. So you're supposed to make mistakes. The higher up the rank you get, the less mistakes you're allowed to make. So that's, that's, the, that's what karate is. That's what training in a dojo is. And in doing that, you develop relationships with people. And if you don't develop those relationships, you don't know the person. It's like, it's like a carpenter not knowing their tools. If I'm, if I'm going to be a carpenter, I need to know my hammer. I need to know what kind of hammer, how to use that hammer, what I'm trying to do. And then I need to, once I really learn the tools, I need to learn to build something. So just because I am competent in kicking and punching and physical, if I don't have an idea or concept of what I'm trying to build, um, it's useless. It's like having a million dollars and sticking it in my pillowcase. It doesn't, we're supposed to build something. We're supposed to build ourselves. We're supposed to build each other. And we're supposed to share it with other people so everybody benefits from this. As opposed to trying to beat somebody up, you know, so that you can make money in a ring somewhere. That's not what this is about. So people don't have an understanding of what, what it is that we do here. That's the underlying purpose behind what we're doing. And these are all just modalities in which to do that. The kendo, the kenjutsu, the, the ei, the... the, the uh, Judo, the Jiu-Jitsu, the, the, the uh, Bato Jitsu, the Kori Jitsu, the, all the stuff that we do are just different modalities to accomplish the same task. It's a different car. So if I look at it as, and that's what dojo means. Dojo means the place where I define the way. Dojo, uh, do is a road or a path. 
That's what that means. And Joel is a place. It's a place that the path is, right? The place that I, I, I take the path to life. And while I'm walking on this path, I see things and I learn things. And my path through life, that, that's what we do here. And the more people that are here, the more experiences we have, the faster and better we grow, right? The more diverse our environment, right? So we become more well-rounded people. So the better I know myself, the better I can know you. And that's why we do Kumiti, Yaksukorendori Kumiti, where we practice fighting with each other and practice forms and stuff, and we practice, and then we do fighting. Of course, it just teaches us to get a better understanding of ourselves and then how to communicate and fit with somebody else. So you need to have that kind of ai, they call aite, aite no kokyo yomo, where we share the same breath. Everything that's in here, we need to appreciate it. Somebody had something to do with it, and if somebody touched it and had something to do with it, it has a life. Because that was somebody's life, time spent, time from them, somebody's life spent making that. So it has life. Talent has a tendency to create a lack of appreciation. Work has a tendency to teach you to appreciate. You know? uh, so, as an old Buddhist saying, a child should know one third hunger and one third cold in order to be a whole human being. Or you don't appreciate warmth and you don't appreciate food. Everybody should learn one third hunger, one th a third of their life should be one third hungry, one third cold, so they will appreciate what they get and not waste. There's so many lessons to be learned here every day. And every lesson is learned here every day. So we teach appreciation whatever vehicle you want. We practice, we're better at some things than others. I call specialists in all the time, you know. I try to, like, I want to do judo, I'll call uh, John Lucas from Smithtown Judo to come in and do clinics of judo with my people. And I can't, I'm not saying that I'm an expert in everything. I'd like to do everything, because everything is the same. It's all a matter of trying to be the best I can at what I do at the moment, and enjoying my failures, but at the same time, using them to inspire to get better. But that's what we do, we try to get better.